Hello there. This is the part two of two for the uh, contour self-portrait demo. And if you're at this stage, hopefully that means that you've uh, been able to uh, work a little bit on the Albrecht Dürer uh, exercise and you're getting uh, accustomed to the idea of working with a grid. So the key thing here is to make sure that your grid proportions are the same as your source image. And then when you are uh, essentially copying the information over, then you're looking at the entire thing with, you know, again, very light, basic, uh, simple shapes to begin with. And then looking at each one of these boxes as a separate composition so that you can make sure that where you put the shapes within each box. So here's a nose and my eye and a little bit of the eyebrow. So within one of these boxes, it's fairly consistent. Uh, and then everything should line up pretty nicely. Uh, okay, so um, if you're at this stage, okay, first thing, if you don't have a uh, ability to grid, as I talked about in the last uh, video, then uh, please send me your reference photo right away and I will grid it and send it back to you. So I'm just trying to uh, make this work uh, given that I don't know what everyone's home studio situation is, if they have a printer or, or uh, some other way, uh, some photo editing software to put a grid on it. Okay. Uh, the goal of this assignment is to work with line weight. As it says in the assignment description, we don't want to do any shading, but we want to describe this uh, object as a three-dimensional form with variation in line weight. So what's line weight? Uh, this is going back to drawing on the right side of the brain. And she talks about different kinds of line systems. You have this a bold line here that's very thick and it tends to flatten things out but make them pop and this works well for cartoons, animation, illustration, uh, graphic design. Certain styles of illustration anyway, because illustration is very broad and it can also include photorealism. And when we are do to, trying to make something photoreal, which is what a, a lot of beginner artists, beginner drawers kind of strive for initially because they might assume that's the kind of pinnacle of good drawing. And there's nothing wrong with trying to learn how to do super realistic drawing, but I'm just going to say that it's not the only way to learn to draw. Uh, it's not the only style that's uh, valid. Okay, so with super realistic drawing, you just wouldn't have a solid line around the entire object. This tends to make things flat and more two-dimensional. Um, and then you have this broken line that's kind of sketchy. And this has this very light gestural feel. So it almost has a kind of a different emotional feel to it. And just, you want to be aware of that lines can communicate emotions. Uh, this is kind of a pure line. It's, it's, it's graceful in its own way, but it's also, it's kind of neutral because it is consistent through the entire drawing. And it doesn't really stand out that much. There's nothing wrong with it either. And then this is the lost and found line. This is one of my favorites. And we're kind of going for a mixture of this pure line and this lost and found line. What they've done here is they've kind of exaggerated the amount of light that's hitting uh, the corners of this leaf. And there are some places where the, the uh, line goes really dark and then it goes so thin that it becomes just a thread or actually disappears altogether and then it starts up again. And that line work has a lot of visual interest. It shows how there's some areas that are that might have a kind of a crease to it or there's more highlights and more shadows. 
So we're going, we're going to go for something like this, but we don't want to break the line entirely. So we want it to be consistent, but have some variety in it, All right? Uh, so. Here is a foam head I got from Michaels. And as I said before, uh, I try to shop at the local uh, art supply stores, the independently owned ones, uh, to support local business. Their prices tend to be better. But there are certain things that Michaels does have that nobody else carries. And this home foam head is one of them. It's, it's pretty good in as a teaching aid because if you see the way the shadows are falling on here and that this is a plane right here and this is a plane. So even though you don't see a line here, but if you look at the samples, uh, you can create a line here and it tells the viewer that there's a shift in plane, right? Uh, another one could be right here. Another one could be here. Another one could be here or there or there. So this is a plane right here and then there's a divot under the nose. Uh, so that can be a a plane in itself and you, you can you're free, feel free to play around with this there's no right or wrong way you don't you're not trying to make yourself beautiful uh, there's a plane right here sorry uh, move that up. plane right here and then a plane right there and you want to see if you can connect all those lines together into one continuous line going throughout the image you know you describe your hairline and connect it to the neck uh, there's muscles in the neck that you could describe. So there's like a big band that like goes right here, like that. And then, uh, of course, for guys, there's an Adam's apple right here. And then there's another band of muscle that comes down like this. Okay. So, uh, if this if that's a little bit overwhelming to get into you don't have to try to do that all in one go you can try to sketch them out and then connect them slowly and then and erase as you go uh for myself uh for the purposes of this demo i'm just going to uh start drawing these lines and because i have a pretty good idea of what I want to do and there's a little bit of improvisation that I'm comfortable with doing as far as connecting things that are floating like you have an eyebrow and then you have an eye and they're kind of floating because they don't naturally have edges of shapes that connect to other parts of the face right you don't have an edge you have shadow areas and then there's like a there's a uh uh, the bottom of the eye socket or the where the lid is you could draw a line around that and make yourself a little bit older doesn't matter but you're looking for shifts in planes to draw lines around and connect things together and all this stuff going on inside the ear uh, the assignment asks for graphite and so a uh, graphite stick or an, a darker pencil is good for when you want to get that variation in line weight. If you need to go with a lighter one when you're first describing the uh, various planes and then and building up shapes like this. You see how I, that's building up already? Uh, then you could start to develop them with a uh, lighter pencil and then uh, go in after and try to connect them all with variation in line weight so that uh, the darker parts where there's shadow have a thicker line. So there's light line and then thicker line. You see how like this line has a lot of character to it, right? It and It can kind of be squiggly or you can try to have it 
more uh, consistent. So what I'm going to do now is just go ahead and uh, start working on that. And uh, please email me if you uh, get this started and you're looking for help, send me a photo. Uh, we want to get this done by Sunday and there's no exercise going to be assigned on Thursday. There will be one new, um, there will be one new, uh, uh, video to comment on, uh, like a, like a mini lecture, but, uh, there's no exercise. So I just, hopefully you have enough time to work on this. Uh, the recommended amount of time to spend on this is five hours. Okay. So if the light in this drawing is cut or this image is coming from this side and then there's more shadow on the bottom. So you're going to see me try to privilege uh, the, the highlighted areas like right here with a thinner line and the darker areas with a thicker line. sleeve of my graphite stick came off. If you do have an area where you're trying, where there's like this block of uh, tone, but you're trying not to shade it. So rather than shade it like this, what I'm going to do is try to describe it in line work. And I don't have to fill the whole thing. But just doing this creates texture and visual interest. And then I'm going to draw a plane right here that connects to my eyebrow. And draw a circle around my eye socket, even though there's no line there, but I can create one that shows a change in the surface, the direction of the surface. Sometimes you will need to lift up, but you try to start your line where you stopped. Darker here, darker, lighter. And you can go over line it more than once. Okay, so I will stop there, play around with that. Uh, feel free to do more than one. And uh, please contact me, uh, get it started as early as you can, and then contact me if you need more help. Okay, I hope you have fun with this. Talk to you later.